What's going on, everybody? Jenna Ben94 here. Welcome back to the Twin Brit. We are back on the Bow Fighter, guys. This is episode number six. So glad you can join us. Today, guys, we're going to be pushing hard to try to get this thing ready for our next episode, which will be priming and painting. So today, I want to work on those cowlings, get those intakes done, work on the landing gears plus the wheel bays, get that all straightened out. I want to clean up the wing tips here and also get those rear stabilizers on as well. We have quite a bit left to do. We need the wheels done. We need to clean up all of that stuff. We need to do some painting as well. So we have quite a bit of work to do. So before we move any further, guys, I wanted to go ahead and install the front gun sight. It's just one little hole there, one little locating tab. No big deal. I'm going to use my tweezers, a little bit of extra thin, so next episode we can button it up with the cockpit canopy. We also have to work at the horizontal stabilizers and the wheels. We have to do some serious sanding on those, get those things clean and ready for installation. So this episode is going to be a little bit on the longer side, at least compared to my usual videos. I'm going to try to pack as much as I can in with this whole build session. I really want to get this thing ready for paint and priming next episode. I think then we'll be right on the money to finish it up next week. So let's go ahead and do some cleanup, guys. I want to go ahead and work on the horizontal stabilizers. Those are pretty decent. I want to get the wheels all ready to go. And I also want to work on the front cowling and the engine itself. Let's go ahead, pull out the jeweler file, get that sandpaper ready, and let's clean up some parts. All right, everybody, we are ready to rock with this engine. We have the front cowling more or less cleaned up. We've got the engine mounted to the back firewall. We are ready to go ahead and check out what we can do to make this engine look a little bit better. Now, I've been looking through reference photos and pictures and images and all that, and there is quite a bit of detail that's missing out of this basic plastic engine. That's okay, I mean, for the most part, but I wanted to try to kind of spice it up a little bit by including some piping and then eventually including some supports in there. So first things, let me show you what the engine actually looks like. This is one of the pictures I found of an actual bow fighter being built. You can hopefully kind of see that there's a lot of piping on the inside. A lot of it is somewhat obscured by the outer ring there on the actual cowling, but I think I can make an approximation. So I'm gonna go ahead and start up by stretching some sprue. Now we have a candle right here. I've had this for years, still works great. Drop it into one of my paint dishes and we're going to just take one piece of sprue. Now, I'm not exactly really, really good at stretching sprue. It kind of takes me a few pieces to go ahead and really get my pattern down. But what we want to do is not really burn the plastic, but just use the heat from the candle to just heat it up, to make it pliable, to make it flexible. I'm going to go ahead and run that heat up and down that whole plastic piece, really trying to give it a nice even heat across the whole part. Then, as you can see, it's kind of wiggly, a little bit like a spaghetti strand. So we're going to pull it up and stretch it slowly. Any faster, you might break, might become brittle, and might snap it. I'm also going to give it a little bit of a twist because I want some curved parts for these wires. So that's actually not too bad. So we have to make a ton of these because there's a lot of different hoses and things that we need to go ahead and scratch build. Get that nice heat going overall for the entire piece of that plastic sprue, and then just slowly stretch it out. Not really a problem. Now you can go back and you can use the heat a little bit to kind of make some fine tuning adjustments, but I wouldn't leave it over that fire for too long as it will melt right through that. 
So here on the engine face, I've actually glued down one of the pieces just to kind of test fit. And it looks like it's going to be decent enough. We have these indentations that run all along those cylinder heads. That's where the pipes would typically go. And I've looked at other people's work there online, and I think I can replicate the pipes decently enough. Using those center holes as kind of a guide and then curving those center pipes, this should be decent enough. So let's go ahead and try and see what we can come up with. All right, guys, as you can see here, I have that stretch sprue coming out of each of those little locating tabs, and that should fit right on top once I kind of trim these down a little bit. So I think overall, it's a decent effect. There's a lot of action going on here. It's a very unusual looking design, but this is what I found in my references, and this is what I found also in other people that have done this type of modification. They do the same type of thing. This is exactly what I was going for. Now we can also throw some supports in there later on after I paint it. I think it should look pretty decent. We're gonna go ahead and paint the engine heads up with some NATO black. I don't wanna use flat black because one, I'm kind of running out of it, and two, I don't want it to be so super stark. I want it to have a little bit of gray in it as well, and I think this NATO black should give it a nice weathered appearance and kind of a dirty, grimy black. I think that should be decent enough. The wheel bays are pretty simple. They are made up of a right and a left leg. And then there's a center section that has um, a silver support rod that probably acts as some sort of dampener for the landing gear itself. They don't look too difficult to put together. They're mostly cleaned up. I went ahead and sanded them down. I've taken care of any issues, any marks. So we're ready to go ahead and just start assembling. Now the landing gears themselves are probably the last bit of sub-assembly I have to do with this kit. We have to install those into the wheel bays, and then the wheel bays then press into the bottoms of the wings. Kind of an unusual design, I have to say. Speaking of engines, let's go ahead and dry brush some aluminum all around these engine cylinder heads. Get this thing looking a little worn, a little used. I think this should really make some of the detail pop. And it's not like these engines are super detailed, but I really think a little bit of this aluminum kind of dry brushed across some of the raised rivets. So let's go ahead and dry brush both engines using this aluminum color. And let's see how it turns out, because I have a feeling it's really gonna make this kind of pop. It's gonna get a lot of character. I think just a little bit here on each of those heads, it's gonna make a huge difference. Boy, I tell you, these engines look fantastic. I love how the dry brushing made everything kind of pop, and I love the added detail. I think this is really, really cool. So let's move on and glue in the last major parts and pieces for this fuselage. So I'm going to take a little bit of Tamiya Thin, just drop that on each of the seam lines. Shouldn't be any problem. This fit already on this Bowfighter is amazing. Tamiya did a spot-on job, so this is not going to be hard at all in the slightest. But while that's drying, we're gonna turn our attention to the canopies. Now this is the front canopy, guys, and it looks pretty cool. It's a very big canopy. And we're gonna use our same tried and true method of taking Tamiya tape cut into small, thin strips. We're just going to outline the inside and then cover the whole section with your basic tape.
So our canopies are all masked off, we're ready for paint. So I'm going to use some RAF interior green that I've used for the rest of the entire model. And we're going to go ahead and overcoat this to get that nice interior green color. And then we'll come back and we hit that later when we actually install it to the model. I love the look of that REF green, guys. It looks super good. We're done with that. Let's put those aside to dry. While that's drying, I want to mask off the center hubs for the main wheels here on the Bowfighter. We're going to use our standard tried and true scribing and some blue tape, pull up that center section, stick it down on top of the hub, and we're good to go. This Bowfighter is turning out to be just so, so beautiful. I love how it looks. It's aggressive looking too. So let's move on though and try to put in the last little bits and pieces. The landing gear bay doors are very simple matter. Two locating pins right on either side. Perfect. Awesome. The other side too, super simple, very easy to do. A couple of drops of extra thin that will be cemented in. That's not going anywhere. There's also these little, I would assume some sort of an exhaust vent coming right out of the back of these engine areas right here. So we're going to go ahead and tack those in as well with some extra thin. I'm also installing the very top air intake. That is actually a really super easy thing. Two parts, you have the back section and then you have the front grill. And it looks pretty decent. Fits right in there. I'm going to put a little bit of the glue right here around the front edge. And we're going to glue on the front intake. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that's all leveled out, nice and flush. And we are moving on to the next section and calling it quits for today. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. I know this has been a kind of a rushed episode. I've done a lot of things in this episode. I don't mean to rush, but I really want to make sure that I get this finished by next Friday. I'm really hoping you're enjoying this build because this is a fantastic kit. It really, really is. I've had to put Sci-Fi Wednesdays on hold just for this week and for next week because I want to make sure that this is going to be the only thing on my bench to really make sure I get this finished by the deadline. I really hope you're having a good time watching this build. I know I'm having a great time building it. It's an amazing kit. Next episode, I'm really hoping to get this thing primed, painted, weathered, decaled, and flat coated. It's going to be a lot to do next week, but I'm hoping that I should have enough time to get this video made and get this out to you guys. So do me a favor, guys. If you haven't subscribed already, please, by all means, drop me a subscription. Show me some love. See you back here next week on Twin Brit. Get this bow fighter done and on the build shelf. Thank you so much, guys. Stay safe, keep building, and we'll see you next week.